Hey y'all, this is Notzer, and today we're taking a look at my Hindenburg. Uh, we're actually in rank play, and yes, arms race, rank, yeah. If you haven't played rank, yeah, arms race has been introduced into it. And, uh, you know, you have to grab buffs on the map, and then they enhance your ship further. Um, hopefully you guys will enjoy this game. It's a fantastic game from my Hindenburg, my little secret weapon in rank, and hopefully you guys will enjoy it. My build on the screen is exactly as I would play my Hindenburg. I love it. It works very well. Extended Duration Hydro works great. The protection from main armament and preventative maintenance keeps the guns from being incapacitated. Fast turret traverse lets me play really aggressive. And Expert Loader lets me get those cheeky little AP shots that uh, can happen, but not too frequently. And you have a small window where you can punish. So that's what I'll be looking to do. And, uh, you know, everything else I take is very standard cruiser for me i go a nine skill i try and make sure that i am the most resilient i can be so that i can do my damage per minute which is the advantage that i have so you know we sailed over here we're considering going around the island came back once we realized that our teammates going to actually reveal the location of the hidden rebel base uh and we did four thousand damage to that hidden rebel base uh the daring of course He's sailing in the area, and again, nice follow-up. Two fires. We'll see if the fires stick for a while. Uh, but I'm pretty safe in this position. I appreciate it, and uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a good little start. There is, however, a heal buff that both sides have. Now, one heal buff is not going to be the end of the world, but it will add up, and it does mean that pretty much every ship can recover to some extent. So you can absolutely expect DDs to try and recover and we do not want him to try and recover we follow up with some good damage he take torpedo no no he didn't but he's low so he's probably going to be out of our hair for a while uh, meanwhile we're going to continuously fire our guns and this time we've got a Des Moines uh, there's a couple enemy ships that are not really spotted on the east side now uh, you'll notice I am firing a lot of HE at this point I don't have a perfect broadside Unlike something like the Des Moines or the American Heavy Cruiser Late, the AP doesn't normalize quite as easily. It has a lot of damage, a crap ton of damage per shot, but its normalization is really crappy. So as a German cruiser, you should really try and look to locate your AP shells high on the hull. That way you can have a higher chance of actually doing damage without it ricocheting off of the thicker armor at the waterline. Now, that does mean that you're not going to be able to use AP as frequently as you would like, you know, trying to get those citadels. Ooh, showed a little bit too much side. Uh, but one interesting thing right here, we actually found a soft area where we can fire on a Stalingrad, which is trying to camp the middle of the map. So I figure, you know what, I can sit right here. I'm very far away from most of the enemy. Honestly, it's not that dangerous if you're visible and sailing away from the enemy. It becomes a very hard shot. Whereas, obviously, it's a much easier shot for me to engage that Stalingrad. He's nearly stationary. So we're just going to keep this up. we got about 45 seconds on our scout aircraft. I definitely prefer the scout aircraft over the fighter. I just, I feel like the fighter is just, just crappy. It just doesn't do enough for the cooldown, whereas this... I can actually see my target, I can fire on him, and reliably hit him, even if he's actively maneuvering. We just have to see him and have a, a, a gauge of what he plans to do. So he clearly dumped his nose into the corner of that island, hoping to avoid oh, that, uh, that enemy DD. Quite nearly going to run right into torpedoes, but he stops just in the nick of time. Does not take the final blow. Uh, I am adjusting my shot. Notice we have two heal buffs, we have two maneuverability buffs, and we have two consumable buff cooldown. Not the reload. The heal is great, but not the reload one. And oh, looky there. We've got an enemy GK who is coming around the corner, picking on my team. Ooh, Smolensk got that daring that we worked on earlier. Got some damage on him. It's always important to try and get some trade damage. You know, especially in arms race. You have health, most likely, and if you don't, well, don't be stupid, but you have health recovery. So, 
the best thing that you can do is focus your fire. And I know, oh, focus fire. I know how to focus fire. Do you? Do you really know? Because it doesn't feel like most of the community knows what focus fire actually means. Focus fire means you stop shooting whatever you happen to be shooting at and you instantly switch to that person. Because if everyone is shooting at him, it is much harder for him to do anything to your team. He will become overwhelmed. He will probably retreat. But the important thing is you all gave him a reason to retreat. Like in this example, I do not want the GK to kill my friendly battleship. I am going to do everything I can to keep him alive. Especially considering how far away I am from the enemy. You know, basically, the GK is the only ship that could actually punish us in this position. So, until he wants to actually shoot at us, we are going to bait him. We are going to say to him, I dare you to shoot at me. You're not going to dare. You're not going to devil dog. He's barely... Oh, man, the Monty's barely alive. My God. Don't, don't get in a secondary gun range of a GK, too. I know it was sort of a surprise that he sailed around and got to the corner. But you don't want to be in secondary gun range with the GK. You just want to sail away from him. And, uh, you know, we've been doing a pretty good job. The team has collectively worked the GK down to a point where he absolutely is going to... Yes, he burned out. Wow. If we can keep our teammate alive... Is there anyone out? Does he have a fire on him? Is there torpedoes? Yeah, there's torpedoes. Oh, great. Of course. If there's not one, there's two. Now we get to deal with the Thunderer. Uh, now, in this exact moment, Notzer, you should be using hydroacoustic because there are torpedoes that could actually hurt us. Thankfully, they don't. But there's no reason to not, you know? So, I notice enemy Thunderer... He fires his guns. Let's just continue this turn party and turn the ship away from the Thunderer, knowing that he can actually follow up on us. Now, the Monty does die. But having that first shot against the Monty actually is a hugely impactful choice for that Thunderer. Because he chose to ignore me and shoot the lower health target, I am in a better position because I was able to reorient myself without risking my ship. This is going to set me up for success. So we're going to whale in on this guy. First up, we did some HE, hoping to cause some fire. Of course, we don't. But we switched to AP. And notice where we're aiming. We are aiming at the top of the hull. And I also am trying to look off. There is enemies wanting to shoot at me, but I, I can't really afford to do much. Uh, we have to be very careful that the Thunderer does not turn and shoot at us. And yeah, we're getting overwhelmed for sure. Definitely should be using Hydro. Definitely should be using Hydro. Uh, because the Thunderer angles a little bit, I decide, okay, we are actually going to use HE. A little bit of angle. German AP drops off a huge amount. Uh, but you can always add it as extra boost to your damage output. You know, a couple broadsides, and there's 10k, 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 and then all of a sudden he's dead k. And that's, that's the way you want it to go. So... Good effort from our team. We did lose a friendly Monty. But all in all, I think we did pretty good. So I'm going to move back up and notice another enemy ship. Really, this spot, a lot of enemies on the north spawn, they love this spot. So a really good counter position is exactly where me and the Ohio happen to be. That way, the enemy can't really exist freely. Obviously, the... Ships on the left side, they can't shoot at the Des Moines, but the ships on the right side can. You don't want a limbing all in one direction. Nice, great damage from the Ohio, great damage from us, great damage from anyone. We're just trying to finish this guy off. He is attempting to heal himself, and I am trying to angle against most of the enemy, which is on the east side. They're the guys on the left. They tried to help their team, but they couldn't. Uh, every second that you're spending trying to kill something, something is dialing in on your position. So you got to be extra careful, extra aware. Teammates trying to kill him. Finally, they kill him, and we're alive. Our health looks pretty good. Happy about it. We've uh, another follow-up, of course. It's always the follow-ups that give me Citadel issues. It's that free damage from me being over-eager to turn the ship back towards the game. Because you never know. You know, what if... 
What if we take out the Des Moines and that Holland on our team is in the center and he's under fire and I can't get back and help him or do damage to the opponents so that they're less likely to attack? Then I'm in a really bad spot. And yeah, sure, the Des Moines can punish that broadside very easily and of course he just did, but we do have the health to solve the problem. If you do have the health to solve the problem, you might consider doing them, you know. It, of course, uh, there's someone watching this going to be like, well, Notzer, I took your advice, and I showed broadside, and I detonated, and it lost our team the game with three seconds left. <laughs> and I'm going to be going, why did you show broadside with three seconds left? It all depends on the situation, right? Right. So... We're moving back over towards these enemies uh, with Stalingrad. There's enemy DD. Uh, unfortunately, Ohio, he can't do anything. My Hydro is nearly going on cooldown. And oh, hello there. Enemy DD, ready to go. Aim. And of course, HE <laughs> goes without saying. Um, good salvo. Good salvo. We got uh, Confederate with that salvo. Uh, a follow up salvo. Looks like the Stalingrad did get taken out. Nice. Very nice, very nice. The Ohio is under torpedo threat. He probably will take a couple torpedoes, but I don't think he's going to die. I think it would be very hard for him to die here. And, of course, famous last words, right, Notzer? Yeah, famous last words. But hopefully he doesn't die, and hopefully I am getting in position to help him out. Enemy Montana, he's basically full life. He is full life. Uh... He's kind of nearly in line of sight, and uh, Shimakaze takes out the Smolensk. So, they have control over the west. They have a full-life battleship. I and the Ohio, plus two DEs, are all that's left on our team. Now, I need to be careful. I, I don't really like this positioning at this point in the game, because I feel like it's going to lead towards every single person on my team collectively line of sighting ourselves from the majority of the enemy team you don't ever want to get in a situation where every single person on your team is going to the right side of the island someone has to go left so that you don't allow them to just go ring around the rosy and that's my fear my fear is of course that these dds are going to come this way they're going to try and play it safe uh try and spot us for this full life montana I've got the German Hydro, which I decide, okay, we're going to pull it. And we're going to slam the ship right into the side, and we do catch sight of the Shima, just barely. Would not have ever expected the Shima to be in that position. And, ah, uh, man, did we pull an Austin Powers? I really don't want to be hard-locked here. I, I desperately want to get out from behind this because I feel like my team kind of needs me. But there's also a part of me that says, you know what, let's not be hasty. Our team's doing a good job taking out the Shimakaze. Yep, good job. Uh, there's only two enemies left, the Full Life Montana and, of course, the Summers. Uh, I am, I got about a minute and 40 seconds. I'm curious what the enemy DD is going to end up doing because he has used one torpedo. One of three. So he has two left over. Enemy Monty looks to be charging forward. Since the Monty's charging forward, I'm gonna charge forward so we can have our Hydro up and boom! Enemy DD, you're spotted, sir. We have a minute left. We're gonna just unload our HE as much as we can. I don't really care what the Monty's looking at. I want him dead. And you know, maybe that's a bad call and ooh, here comes some torpedoes. Uh, he switched to AP, no big deal. Enemy Monty takes a shot, it's okay. Aim, fire. Looks good. Avoid those torpedoes. It's very easy to do with the German and Hydro. And look at what we got here. We got a full life Monty right in front of us. Well, you know, I'm going to take advantage of these torpedoes. This is why I love my German cruisers, because they can actually do this. I can get into a position where I could actually use my torpedoes on a full broadside. And what can he do? I was too healthy at this point. Even his full health state. Get a little extra damage there. Even his full health state. Oh, yeah, juicy. Even his full health state was not enough for the torpedoes plus the AP broadside. So, great match in the Hindenburg. Have really enjoyed it, and it's really worked well this season for me. Uh, 242,000 damage done. Devastating strike, Confederate. We got 
three kills, 3,141 base XP. Hell yeah! That's the kind of game you want to see a big ultra carry mode in my beloved German cruiser. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out more of my content, you can click the most recent or the most relevant uploads. You could also choose to subscribe to my channel. We do daily World of Warship videos, first impression, how to, news, and review related. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. You can take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you, have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.